Okay, got rid of it. And the skip, the skip thing is actually really, really good. I mean, it stops skipping here because I haven't read it yet. This is actually pretty fascinating. I like this game for this feature even more. Now I can really skip all the things I already read in a previous thing. So this makes it faster to get to the other worlds. For a change, I'm not among the first ones to come to morning class. Uh, <clears throat> for a change, I'm not among the first ones to come to morning class. Instead, almost everyone else seems to be here already. I recognize most of my class by their faces by now, though the names escape me still. The class goes on lazily. I think I'm starting to get into the rhythm of the school. I have even stopped worrying about taking notes and being overtly attentive. The first days I was pretty high strung in class. Motu finishes his lecture about electricity early, but continues with a pause about the festival. So, as you know, the festival is on the day after tomorrow. I hope everyone's projects are going to be successful this year. Have a good time, but also, co also come Sunday, please. Keep the meaning of this festival in your minds. Games and fried food! Everyone bursts out in laughter, and so do I. Yes, thank you, Mikado. Wait, is this her last name? I guess it's her last name. But what I mean was more... The remainder of this sentence is buried beneath the wing of the lunch bells and everyone starts packing their things. And I start the skip mode, maybe? Okay! So I skip through... Okay. Kiso! I'm going to make you a one-time only super extra special lunch offer! Amy's... Homemade lunch boxes and the privilege of enjoying them in private with two bombshell beauties. Her overly flirtatious sales pitch echoes in the hallway, a remarkable feat since it's full of people. Amy strikes a very confident looking pose, as though as an attempt to one up her own ridiculousness, puffing her very modest chest and making the V for victory sign with her hands. Sounds delicious. To what do I owe this honor of being invited? You stood there looking, you stood there looking really lost, and I said so. I thought you could use some company. I forgot her voice again, I'm so sorry. This, the, today is really hot again outside, and the air is not the best flow in my room, unfortunately. That is probably the most depressing reason imaginable. So, how about it? You're probably really lonely and would eat that awful cafeteria food all alone otherwise. Uh, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Sure, I have your lunch offer with pleasure. Let's go to the roof? The roof? Why the roof? Because that's where we eat lunch. And if I don't get up there, then she probably wander off. Then I just know she go hungry because she never packs a lunch for herself. Who will? Come with me. Without answering my question or waiting for a response, she grabs me by the arm and drags me through the hallways. Something's odd and wrong here. Something's really, really wrong here. This shouldn't be happening. But the skip says that it... I attempt to make conversation on the way. Why do you have an extra lunch? Amy smiles guiltily. Actually, it's yesterday's lunch. I slipped in a one at lunch and forgot to eat it. Wait. Okay, this is still something I haven't read before. I go with this for now, but I don't like how, where this is going. 
Why would she come to me? I skipped the warning things. I stopped early not to warn anymore and so on and so forth. Oh, and the last time she offered me lunch was because I almost got a heart attack in my first playthrough because of it. I slipped in a one at lunch and I forgot to eat. Huh? The stairway to the roof is a little dilapidated, but it's clearly been used recently. At the top of the stairs is a door, complete with missing padlock. I wonder who the intrepid individual was, was that removed the lock. Amy shoves the door open and steps beaming into the sunlight. Suddenly a tall dark strange appe stranger appears out of nowhere, standing imposingly in front of us. Amy flinches back, almost falling back down the stairs. Wait, is there actually an option? Disable full screen mode, skip unread text. Keep skipping up to choices. Okay. Let's see. Okay, so this is all. So now I can just skip and wait for things I haven't read yet. This is rather pleasant. Okay. This is really great that I figured that out. But I go, by the time I leave the main building, sunset isn't too far away. A small trickle of students remain, but the majority have left presumably to their homes and dorms. And for those who haven't watched my first playthrough of this, I highly suggest to do it for the sake of the first chapter. Because I won't read everything again. And I will only thoroughly read the, the, the chapters which are the specific routes for the specific characters. So yeah, I highly recommend watch the first playthrough. So yeah, click it. Please, maybe. But I guess at that point you already did. And I will most likely have a future self of me telling you to do it. So whatever. By the time I leave the main building, sunset isn't too far away. Small trickle of students, presumably to their homes and doors. doors. Okay, I guess I need to buy some supplies. I can't live off cafeteria food and eating out for my entire stay here. As I leave for the gate, I make a few loud stretches to try and stave off the tiredness that's accumulated over the week. After passing through and rounding the corner though, I see a solitary figure walking downhill towards the small town below. The color of her hair and tapping of her cane are unmistakable. Oh god. Oh, I, I fell for her so much, but only for the notes on her good attitude. But I have to go for Hanako. I have to go for Hanako first. I was, it was strongly recommended by one of my subscribers to go with Hanako first and Lily last. I quickly walk up to her, which seems to catch her attention without a word needing to be said. Hi, Lily! She takes a moment to place the voice, slightly adjusting her head to face a bit more towards the source of my voice as she does. Iso? Yep, that's me! She seems to have a good memory of voices. The fact that she actually remembered this is a pleasant surprise. Good evening. What brings you here? Once again, she gives a small polite bow. And once again, I reply in kind before realizing that I needn't do so. Just going into town? Uh, just going into town, you? My, my. What a coincidence. Doing the same thing, eh? Hmm, I usually go shopping on Fridays. She pauses for a moment, suddenly looking a little lost. That said, Hanako usually comes into town with me. <clears throat> ah, not lost but worried. The two do seem to keep pretty close tabs on one another. It's kind of surprising that Hanako would just forget Lily like that. I noticed her reading in the library. She probably just caught, just got caught up in a book. She let out a small sigh of relief. Thank you. She has a, she has a habit of doing that. A vidweeder? 
Wait, she doesn't like being about crowds of people, so weeding away from everyone's lets her relax a bit. Although she probably didn't intend it, I can't help but grimace as I recall my first meeting with her. Hardly wanting to bring it up, I remained silent as we quietly continued to walk down the quiet road. Tack, 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 tack. With the road bereft of cars and the students of Yamako increasingly far behind us, the quiet rustling of the leaf and the measured tapping of Lily's cane against the sidewalk are all that can be heard. It's kind of nice, especially compared to the hustle and bustle of where I used to live. Before I know it, I've relaxed so much that a loud yawn escapes before I can control it. Tired? Yeah, I've been running wack these past few days. That's an understatement to be sure, transferring into a different school would be bad enough, but nothing like this. Well, hopefully everything should be settled down for you. The festival's got everyone a spin right now, and you've been plopped right in the middle of things. For a moment I hesitate, but given her apparent tolerance for frankness, I decided to give my full thoughts. I guess Yamaku's kind of different though. I mean, the formalities surrounding everything, the isolation around it, not to mention the most obvious difference. It's kind of a whole different mindset. I suppose I guess I suppose I get used to it though in time. She gives a matter of fact not, apparently pleased with my answer. It feels almost as if she's included me in the flock of students she is shepherding along with class 3, 2 and Hanaku. Well, not that I mind, it's nice to get the thoughts off my chest in any case. Looking on the bright side, one could see that it is a chance for a new beginning. You should cherish the ability to make new friends. That's optimistic. Nonetheless, it's good to have a positive attitude about such things, I suppose. Guess that's a good take on it. Walking on down the road, she seems to be become somewhat unsettled. Before I can ask what's on her mind, she seems to collect herself and speaks up about something else. So, where in town were you going? That's actually a pretty good question. I'd come in to buy food, but the layout of the place is still totally foreign to me. I had intended to just wander around and see what I could find, but with sunset already approaching and nightfall not too far away, that doesn't seem very wise. I'm going to have to ask her for directions. Again. I was just going to get some food, but now that you mention it, I don't really know the way. Well, now this is quite lucky. I was just about to go to the convenience store myself. Looks like I'll be in your care again. Then, thanks. Together we walk to the store. My pace is carefully slowed to remain beside her. Compared to my usual walking pace, hers is quite a bit slower. Not that it's without reason. After what couldn't be more than a several minutes, I catch sight of our objective. This town really is pretty small. Without further ado, we make our way inside with a greeting from the counter. And if I tag along with you, usually Hanako would help me, but seeing as she is not here? It takes a moment before I realize what she means. Considering she wouldn't be able to read any of the labels, shopping without any help would be a big pain for her. That said, I can't shake the feeling that I shed... Wait. That said, I can't shake the feeling that Shed had this idea, that she had this, this idea since I said I was coming here. S sure, it'd be my pleasure. I grab two well-used wet baskets from the small stack beside the entrance, handing one to Lily. She lays it on the ground, putting her school bag in, retracting her cane, and sliding it through the basket's handles before picking it back up in her right hand. Wait, if she doesn't use her cane? 
Before I can complete the thought, she comes beside me and pinches the cuff of my uniform in her slender fingers. Is this all right? Uh, sure. I have no reason not to accept. I can think of worse things that can that than shopping with a pretty girl holding on to me. If it is out of necess necessity. We never get our way through the store, with not one of the occasional passing customers seeming to bat an eyelid. Considering how close Yamaku is, I guess seeing students from there must be entirely normal for the local residents. As we reach as we reach each Azel, I think I looked this up already, but I forgot already what it was. Bad brain, bad brain. I quickly check with Lily and find out what she needs. I grab it along with what I'm looking for and put our items into their respective respective baskets. I guess this is the same routine she and Hanako follow every Friday. Right, all that's left is the bread and that should be my shopping done. Do you need anything else, Lily? No, this should be everything. Off we go then. With a quick side trip to the bakery section, we make our way to the re re registers. The line thankfully is almost non-existent. It is not long before we've both paid for our food and are out of the door. As Lily retrieves her cane and extends it to full length, I waste a minute looking upwards at the night sky while holding both our bags. For a moment I try to make clouds with my breath, but the summer's heat doesn't seem to cooperate. Eventually she wipes herself, taking a quick stretch before taking her bag and leaving me to my two. You tired as well? The festival preparations have been complete chaos. She's in a Breathing down my neck doesn't exactly help things either. Hey, she's only trying to get everything organized. Better now than later, right? I suppose. I'm going to enjoy relaxing in town tomorrow. That's for certain. I guess the festival preparations must be taking their toll on both of them. We walk out into the quiet street talking between ourselves as we carry our bags of food and supplies from the store. Wait, what's that? I notice a very distinctive figure making its way towards us. Silhouette by the street lamps. Si silhouetted by the street lamps. For a second, I think it's another male student for my class. But as he, or should I say she, gets closer, I recognize her quickly. Oh! Win? What are you doing out here so late? Win? Lily perks her head, looking like she's trying to focus on listening more keenly. It suddenly comes to me that I should probably interpret the scene for her. It's Win. Tetsuka, I think was her last name, from our school. She stiffens at the name and gives a complicated looking expression. Something like a forced fusion of composed smile and painful cringe. Ah, I understand. I guess Lily knows Wynn too. Wynn turns to look at us, looking terribly out of it. I'm not entirely sure if she recognizes either of us, or at least she doesn't acknowledge it if she does. She looks like a zombie, or a statue, a statue of a zombie. But slowly, some symptoms of understanding seem to light in her dark eyes. This is something she must react to. Wind blinks once, very thoroughly. Hello. I think I had a very, very timid voice and really awkward for her. It it was almost a manly voice. There's an awkward pause, everyone waiting for someone else to say something. What are you doing here this late? I... 
I was wondering about that myself, too, just now. What was the voice? It was a little bit, it was a mix of a bored and boyish voice. <clears throat> what was it? I was wondering that too. I was, I think I spoke extremely through the nose while voicing her like, like this maybe. Maybe like this. I was wondering about that myself too. Just now. Some people asked that just before. I assume they were wondering the same. I didn't know. They didn't know either. I asked. That's why I'm wondering. So, that was pretty much it. It's a murder mystery without a murder. They were going that way. She turns facing to her white in order to demonstrate the direction the other people went to as if that was important, then rotates back like a mechanical puppet in one of those overly complicated clockworks. Th this is not the final solution for her voice, I will get my grid back on it. For a person who gives an impression of being the quiet type, Wynne really does use a lot of words to say things that doesn't need a lot to be said. Unsure if she's finished, I say something. I say nothing. Neither does Lily, who seems equally wobbled of words for the time being. I think that both of us are in fact just scared that any response might provoke her to continue. <laughs> Our stupefied lack of reaction doesn't face Win at all. She keeps looking at us, expectantly, a calm hint of expression on her blank face. She seems to be that kind of person, always so relaxed. As if bull elephant great sedatives were flowing in her veins in the place of blood. Do you have <clears throat> do you have amnesia? I don't recall you having anything of the thought though. No, I don't think it's that. The other passerby were probably just worried though. You do look really lost, the way you are standing in the middle of the street. Oh, I see. Maybe I should have taken some other kind of pose in that case. I ponder for a while whether I should chase this angle further or get, give up for the sake of my own sanity. I decide on the latter. It seems that most of the time it's better to not read too deeply into what Wynne is babbling about. Talking with Wynne is like playing chess with a supercomputer who does seemingly completely random moves as if to mock everything you know about chess. It's like that except with human interaction. And even if I win, it feels like losing. Damn, it's just like Kenji said. Even when I win, I lose. Is this the power of the girls of Yamaku? I push the thought aside as too dangerous to consider further. It's probably just Kenji's anti-female propaganda getting to me during a moment of weakness. Yeah, maybe taking another pose might have worked. So, anyway, you have no idea what you are doing here? She frowns, looking extremely displeased that either my question, its consequences, or the answer she is about to give. I do have some idea. I can't really tell what kind of idea. It sounds like progress at least. Um, <clears throat> that sounds like progress at least. Lily sounds as if she spotted an opening for some kind of discernibly normal conversation. I can't say I share the, her optimism. Yes, there's some. Definitely. The rest will come later. I'm sure of it. I always have reasons. The ensuing silence kills Lily's hope all too visibly. That didn't last long. Wins, as far as I can tell, unbased. Assurances aside, what should be done? We could just leave her to her own devices, whatever those are, but it's late and I don't think we'll be getting any thanks if Win is found standing here in the middle of the night. Which she probably will, unless she manages to remember what she was doing here in the first place. 
As for me, trying to guess what might have been going on in her mind when she decided to embark on this adventure, chances seemed to be on par with winning the lottery. Several times in a row. Lily is oddly quiet too. I'd appreciate some support from the sidelines here, especially if she is more familiar with Wynn than I am. But, I can't, but it can't be helped. It seems her fami familiarity with Wynn is exactly why she is staying subdued. So, I assume you were going somewhere, not coming back to the school? Any idea where? Her eyes widen in shock and she jolts back in a somewhat artificial way, making it seem like an act rehearsed for situations like this. Are you a mind reader? Is that your disability? How unique! No, what? Why would you think that? You know what I was doing. You knew what I was doing. It was just an educated guess. We walked the same street in the other direction just before to get to the store. If you were going to school, we would have met you on the way. Oh. She looks a little disappointed. Wynn already knows what disability... No, wait. No, she only knows that it is something in the inside. Like Kenji, Wynn appears quick to jump to completely irrational conclusions. Maybe it's something in the water here. I make a mental note to stock up on soft drinks. You know, that is the second time this week that someone asked if I was a mind reader. Do I really give off that impression? Wynn shrugs her shoulders, which is all the answer I which is all the answer I get. You know, maybe you should come with us back to school. Lily interjects, as I am about to further debunk my alleged mind reading capabilities. She sounds rather concerned. The paper thin smile on her face badly disguised that fact. Maybe she came to the same conclusion as I did. For everyone's sake, I decide to let the mind reading topic drop, as it's entirely inane anyway. Yeah, Lily's right. If you can't remember, there's no point staying here. We considers this rather simply deduction for a moment, then nods. Okay. <laughs> such, such an odd character. We start towards the school again having wasted way more time than necessary with this episode. Yeah, wow, this is actually really an episode. Wynne walks along the edge of the sidewalk in her arrhythmic way, looking like a mix of sleepwalker and rope dancer while Lily keeps one hand on my shoulder, tapping at the ground with her cane. Tap, step, step, tap, tap, step, step, step. Apart from that, and a few fragmented beginnings of conversation, it's quiet. A quiet, quiet... Wait, a quiet? Quite apart from the relaxing one into town at that. So, how's the mule going? We are going to get bad luck. Never talk about works in progress. I'm sure it'll be wonderful. Bad luck. Tap, step, tap, step. She doesn't care to talk about it. Lily's politeness feels out of place. For the first time. Step, step, step. The hill Yamaku rests on top of is surprisingly steep. Going uphill. We slow the pace. But I still feel my pulse rising and breathing getting heavier. Almost there, I can see the gates already. More than that though, I notice that Lily's hand slightly tightens on my shoulder. Interpreting it as a gesture that she wants to ask something. I speak up. Anything wrong, Lily? I resist the urge to say, aside from our traveling companion. <laughs> wow! Oh, but only just. For a moment she seems to debate whether she would even bring it up, but goes for it anyway. Is everything alright? Alright? How do you mean? The fact that I can't interpret her incredibly vague question puts her off for a second. It's... it's just... you seem unusually tired. 
I guess? Now that she brings it up, I notice that my breathing is strangely heavy. The uphill walk has really done a job on me. Lily noticed it all too quickly. This is a decision! Oh my! Oh my! Oh! Oh my! Oh my! Oh my! Oh shit! Okay, so this is a decision. So which one would... Sorry, I'm not in very good condition. And I don't really want to talk about it. The not ve very good condition would be as true as the other one. And I really want to open up, but I could, if I do this, I could accidentally end up with Lily, which I don't want to. Lily seems to be one of the caring type. If I tell her I don't really want to talk about it, she actually maybe wants to find out and help. On the other hand, there is a rule don't ask questions. I think for now I go with sorry I'm not in very good condition. It's alright, I just need to catch my breath. My condition isn't the best these days. Oh. Is it something that is related to you being transferred here, I mean? Oh, this was a totally different voice. She cuts herself off rather abruptly, maybe realizing she was being a bit intrusive. Her instincts are sharp though, and while I don't like the subject, it's not like I should lie about it. If it's Lily, I don't think I mind. I'm just a little weak for the time being. Hanako said you look fairly healthy, so I naturally thought... Lily doesn't finish her sentence again, letting it trail off with a measure of concern. As she furrows her brow, Lily's uncomfortable expression spurs me to say at least something to ease her feelings. It's surprising she she's this flustered, considering her straightforward attitude with her own blindness. She must know that not all share her own comfort about such things. N no, it's okay. I have a pretty, I guess the best way to put it would be messed up heart. Arrhythmia. I had a bad heart attack while a while ago because of it and spent most of the spring in a hospital. Ended in Yamaku on doctor's orders. She silently nods her head in acknowledgement. My answer though only seems to make Lily follow her bro even further. She doesn't seem to quite know how to react, given we don't really know each other that well. I can't really fault her for it, given I have that exact same reaction. To my surprise, in a moment's time her face shows that she comes to some sort of realization. Wait, so the time when Amy and you collided in the hallway... I grimace slightly. Her ability to connect the dots quite so fast is unexpected. Yeah, I guess I'm a textbook example of why those rules about running in the corridors exist. That was a lot more dry than I intended. Lily visibly sh she's shies away from continuing the topic. While I do want to assuage her concern, I really don't want to dwell on this either. Don't worry about it. I try to offer a reassuring smile, but then I realize the futility. Without knowing this, Lily smiles at me reassuringly, but doesn't say anything further. <laughs> 